Um, I'd like to welcome you to this presentation by Doug Ellsjack, um, who's from Hitachi. Um, Doug is one of our customers. Uh, my name is Sean Delaney, VP of Global Sales for IASTA. Um, we thought this would be a good um, session to sponsor because it <coughs> tells an interesting story about how Hitachi has moved from a relatively tactical procurement organisation to a more strategic um, organisation that's going to focus in on one part, which is a supplier scorecarding piece. Um, prior to being at Hitachi, Doug was at Schindler, um, Schindler's Lifts, not the film. Um, and, um, and then prior to that, he was at MK International Lucent Technologies. So he's a seasoned practitioner, brought up in Edinburgh, lives in Switzerland, multilingual, and that is why we have got the name of this presentation that I can't <coughs> pronounce, but Doug can. So I'd like to introduce you to Doug Elschak, please. Grüezi mit Mount. So I think we'll do this in English, or Gallic if you prefer, French, Italian, uh, most of these languages I don't speak. Um, very simply, I joined Hitachi a year back, um, and when I joined, I, I basically kicked off a project within uh, what we call the supply management team, but it's basically procurement and logistics. Um, I kicked off a project <laughs> called Project Rapier. Uh, if you're one of my suppliers and you visited me in my office, you will have seen the rapier in my office. Uh, if you've not visited me, you've missed the joy of seeing the sword on the wall. But Project Rapier is actually all about uh, the introduction of category management, uh, increasing our savings, decreasing our claims, which I'll come back to later, uh, upgrading the process and the skills of the people in the department. And basically within about a month of joining the company I'd worked at, that was more or less what we needed to do within the team. Uh, and that wasn't just alone, that was with the team, my various stakeholders, and a few of the suppliers. And then in month two, I realized we'd missed something uh, fairly fundamental, which was understanding our supplier base. Because we seem to manage most of our suppliers uh, based uh, on myth, memory, good feelings, bad feelings, and nobody could tell me, for example, do we like ABB or not, and why, more importantly. And should we give them a contract for within a single sales division or across multiple sales divisions? Because we didn't really know. We had lots of opinions, uh, especially the higher the spend, the further up uh, the management chain you got, uh, the, opinions, the opinions varied uh, dramatically. So I wanted to set about basically curing this issue for us, amongst all the other things that we're doing in Project Rapier. So very briefly, that's the agenda. Uh, I apologize that we're going to be discussing pizzas. It was just a bright idea at the time. Uh, I'll probably regret it. Uh, I do guarantee, though, by the time you leave, I will have taught you how to make a pizza. So at the very least, you'll have learned something. Maybe you'll also have learned how not to manage your suppliers. Well, that's your call. If I talk too fast, just wave. And if I should talk faster, I don't know, you can wave twice or something. Hitachi Zosen is a large uh, corporate uh, based in Osaka, Japan. Virtually 80% of the sales are Asia Pacific based. And I work for the division in Europe. We're more or less the other 20%. Uh, we have almost a standalone uh, status. Uh, for example, we have a CPO on the board. I've met him once, and that's the time I spoke to him. I have no reporting responsibilities to him, but I do send him quarterly reports. I'm not sure he reads them. Because we're Europe, they're Japan. What we do, though, is we do share uh, some sourcing centers in China and in India, uh, and we provide sourcing for them within Europe. So with uh, a level down within the two purchasing organizations, we do talk to each other, at the very least. And we do have uh, staff rotating between Osaka and Zurich. And just if you hadn't realized, we're entirely based in Zurich. And I'll come back to why. So very simply, uh, you might know in the UK there used to be a company called British Steel. It's now Tata, and it's Indian-owned. 
In Switzerland, correspondingly, there was a company called Von Roll, the Swiss British Steel, who's now Japanese owned. We all seem to be moving east one way or the other. But we are originally a Swiss uh, company, now owned by a Japanese uh, shareholder. And basically, we build power stations. So I placed a purchase order the other, well, I signed a purchase order the other week uh, for 5,500 tons of structural steel for one plant that we're building uh, near Leeds. So we tend to buy big stuff, a lot of civil engineering, a uh, lot of heavy equipment, capital expenditure, uh, 95, if not higher percent of my spend is direct spend. I have very little indirects because I have basically one office in Zurich where the 350 staff that work for us uh, are based out of. Obviously we're a mixture, but most are Swiss or German or both. So pizzas or supplier performance measurement. Well, very simply, when I joined, as I said, uh, by the way, this was the most disgusting pizza I could find easily. <coughs> I've not volunteered to eat it. I did take it off the internet. Uh, when I joined, basically, it seemed to me that engineering decided what we bought and why. And purchasing got to argue if there was a price difference. And that was pretty much how we awarded our contracts. And some of these contracts are worth a lot. So I bought an electrical package a few weeks ago, and that's 25 million euros. And we had 12 suppliers that we were bidding and very different scoring with regards to those 12 suppliers. Uh, and if you just chased the money, um, we would definitely have placed the order with the wrong supplier. Now, it might seem a bit strange for a procurement guy to be less interested in the money, but that's basically because we run a balanced scorecard scheme for our awards. We didn't when I arrived. It was an engineering decision with a bit of money thrown in for good grace and a lot of bad decisions taken over the years. And that's why claims for us is critically important. Because when we launch a purchase order on day one, we're probably not going to pay for that a year and a half later when it's delivered. Because the engineering will have changed. Some of the structures within the building may have been shifted a bit to have more optimal engineering and for different uh, components. Uh, and change brings cost. Now, some of it we charge the client for, so we like those claims because we make more money. But unfortunately, that's not the bulk of claims. So pizzas. Here's your recipe. It's very simple. I made it a few weeks ago with my girls, and with the exception of one burnt finger, it all went swimmingly. On the right-hand side uh, is the four slices we have to assessing suppliers. So we initially uh, register suppliers. We may audit suppliers. We certainly measure their performance. And of course, we bid them. And in those four areas, we score them. So the first three basically gives us uh, a long-term supplier capability score. And the last one uh, basically uh, gives us a bid score. When a supplier registers uh, via the ASTA tool, uh, we basically uh, don't ask too much. We get enough information for us to work out, are they of interest? But we also force them to set up one or two of the recurring files that we will need later on. So things like the ISO 9000 records, all this sort of thing, uh, we build that up in stage one. So if they are of interest, it's automatically triggered for renewal within the tool thereafter. Um, if they are of interest, of course, we might send them our RFI, which is much, much more detailed, but we'll show you that later. Uh, we have a, a risk assessment based on categories and spend, uh, and that basically defines whether we audit suppliers at the beginning or later on in our relationship. We do not audit all our suppliers, because quite simply speaking, it's just not worth it for quite a few of them. It's not worth it for us, and it's certainly not worth it for them. Um, and if you are an established supplier, we've been measuring them for years. Now, that sounds a bit strange, given I said earlier no one really understood 
why we dealt with certain suppliers. But basically, the projects and uh, procurement had been measuring fantastic reports, a lot of detail, and then filing them project by project, and the organization as a whole forgot. Not so clever. So uh, we onboard suppliers. Uh, at the moment, I've got about 400 odd suppliers in. Uh, we're about to sweep up about another 150 potential suppliers in Turkey. We've got a big Turkish project coming up. So we're spending a lot of time uh, actually out in Turkey looking at suppliers uh, with our quality uh, assessment guys. Uh, and uh, you can actually see that we've got around to scoring them. So Fuller Automation is, uh, well, certainly one of our top four suppliers. And we know why. And we now, and we now know why and, and how he compares against his competition from a score perspective. So I was in for the earlier session here, which was all about procure to pay. I more or less stayed awake. Uh, but what I liked was they could drill all the way down and have a look at all the scoring uh, and all their reports. I can do exactly the same in the IASTA tool. I'm not here to sell IASTA. There are plenty of other tools out there uh, that do it. Uh, so let's have a look at the first uh, uh, slice. So that's uh, potential suppliers. So you just register on uh, the tool. If we're interested, we invite you back. If we're not, we send you a very polite letter saying get stuffed. It is actually very polite. We don't say get stuffed. Um, but we probably get, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, registrations a week at the moment. That's an awful lot for basically a team of 20 buyers. And the vast majority are not interesting. So we simply don't want to waste our time on them. I'm sure they're very interested in us, but somehow they didn't catch my interest in the first stage. If they are of interest, we ask them to fill in the RFI. That takes them a lot longer. To register takes you 10 minutes max. If you're prepared, it takes you about five. If you're not prepared, it takes you about 10 once you scurry around trying to find the bits and pieces. Um, the RFI, RFI will take you about half an hour. There's a lot more detail in it. Uh, and we score the RFI. So we already say, before we've even met you possibly, how good we think your company is. And we have sets questions that generate points. It's as simple as that. And they're not nice, easy questions like, are you ISO 9000 registered? Yes or no? You can get all the points or none of the points. There is a middle one if you're currently registering. We will check. Um, uh, have you included uh, your uh, health and safety uh, records? Yes or no? Nice and simple for us. We then have a look at them and say what we think of them in comparison to other in, uh, companies operating in that industry. So we go through quite a bit. Uh, a few of my uh, managers internally complain that it's, oh, it's quite complicated because we asked a lot of questions. But in reality, none of the questions are complicated at all. Most of them are fairly digital, yes or no, or give us your statistics, and off we go. So we assess the suppliers. So here you can see one of the, uh, what's roughly in a registration. We take the DMB rating of the suppliers. It's not always available in all countries. We are dealing across the whole of Europe, including a lot of uh, suppliers in Eastern Europe and moving further and further east. Um, we often find that people tell us they have a code of conduct. We can see no evidence of it. And certainly by the time we've decided we want to work with them, if we do, uh, and we've told them we want you to comply with our code of conduct, and then we ask them, how are you going to comply with our code of conduct? Most can't answer that question. And as you can see, there's a lot more in the RFI. Oh, by the way, when uh, we don't use uh, Dun & Bradstreet, we use the Altman Z to score the finances uh, of suppliers. I don't know if you know Altman, uh, but I suspect Dun & Bradstreet's uh, fantastic scoring system is actually a variation on Altman. They won't confirm or deny 
because I'm sure they have to pay some money if they did. Um, where the DMB records or other financial institutions uh, give good recording, it works fine. Where they don't, we just use Altman Z, which works well enough for us. Um, so we've decided you're of interest. And then the category manager uh, works out whether we want to audit you immediately or not. An audit for us normally takes a couple of days. Um, we send you, uh, prior to the audit, uh, everything we expect, uh, a questionnaire that we expect to complete on the day. Uh, so it warns you everything that we're going to ask. There's nothing hidden. There's no hidden questions. None of it's devious or tricky. Uh, you certainly aren't going to walk us around your plants and things like this. Uh, but there's a long list of things that we want to see. Um, and as part of that audit process, assuming that we have negative findings, uh, this impacts your score. It's, uh, if, we, <coughs> if you have a major finding, it takes a third of your previous supplier score down. Uh, if it's a minor finding, it's 3%. Of course, three major ones means that you end up with a score of zero. I don't work with suppliers who have a score of zero. So we, all, so we also have a numeric me method for sifting out suppliers. However, that doesn't mean that the door is closed to you. We wouldn't have wasted all our time and money. It just means, at the moment, I won't place orders with you. Uh, but we do develop uh, action plans with suppliers uh, on the back of the audit. Uh, and if there are major or minor findings, then obviously those are tend to be the ones that we're focusing on. So once you've cleared those issues, or some of them, uh, your score will increase again. But of course, we might have to fly back to check, because we don't trust our suppliers all the time, especially new ones. So yeah, uh, this is just another view from IASTA, but basically uh, uh, it's uh, how the, the RFI has resulted and what the audit impacts are. And then we bid the suppliers, which is the bit, which is the bit that I enjoy, because now we're talking money. But in reality, for us, our scoring system is a balanced <coughs> scorecard. It looks at the scope of works, which is largely scored by, scored by the engineers and the project. Uh, it's the legal ter terms conditions, which is scored by my team, or legal if we want to involve them. Uh, it's the project delivery schedule. Uh, these are complex engineering packages, so it's not a simple delivery for us. Uh, it's the long-term supplier capability score, which we've already generated earlier. Uh, and then it's the total cost of ownership. Because some of our bids to our clients include uh, a 10 to 20 year total cost impact. So it's not even a simple price for us. And of course, we bid into that risks, uh, sorry, we build into that risks. Uh, so if we think there's uh, uh, a chance that you've missed something out or we weren't so clear on some of the engineering answers you gave, uh, we might assign cost to that. So that can impact the total cost of ownership. Or we could just put the score down on the scope of works. But we don't double dip people. You're downscored in one area, not in two. So it's quite straightforward. But I like to track the money where I can. We e-auction, I would say, roughly 50% of our bid packages. Now, you might be a bit surprised by that, given they're highly complex engineering packages with large service <laughs> elements built into them. But basically, from my perspective, uh, if you have three or more suppliers, a reasonable team of engineers, <coughs> you can build a scope of works that you can, uh, that you can auction. I do not believe that auctions are for not, nuts and bolts. Of course, you can use them for nuts and bolts and stationery and other things. But why not use it on the big packages where the real spend is? It's pretty aggressive, I'll be the first to admit. Some of our larger suppliers have been quite frightened by it, but most seem to live with it. And it reduces my bid time considerably. But we don't keep auctioning because we launch roughly three to five major projects a year. Uh, so we might run auctions on two or three of those projects and then we stop. And we move much more to a value engineering perspective with those suppliers, especially if they're consistently winning. And much more importantly for me, if they're consistently performing. And that takes you back to the supplier capability score. 
And so we measure the performance of suppliers. We act, I took three years of uh, all this lovely rich data that we had off the projects and we swept it into the IASTA tool. So actually, we're not starting from scratch. We have over three years of records in there. In two or three years' time, it will be <coughs> even more powerful. But basically for us, uh, performance is on-time delivery, first pass yield, project satisfaction. That's a bit vague. That's up to the project team to basically say good, bad, or indifferent. Uh, and then the claims rate. And we classify claims into basically three areas. Good claims, because I get to charge the client. Bad claims, because you're a thief and trying to uh, take money off me that you're not entitled to. Unfair claims, which are smack in the middle, where yes, you have done extra work. We have valued it at around about the same values you're claiming for, or at least agreed a value that fits for both of us. We will always have claims given the sort of engineering we do. We cannot avoid them. For me, before I came to Hitachi, I very rarely had claims. I bought components for Schindler. Billions worth. But basically, uh, it's a different engineering game altogether. So certainly, IASTA for me delivers a, a process that's pretty transparent. Uh, buyers and engineers and project team can all see the data. Nothing's hidden. It's open within the company. Um, we're rewarding on a balanced scorecard. I now get very, very few questions from senior management about why I want to award a major contract to a certain supplier. There is an awful lot of trust. Uh, I've had quite a few project teams or engineers very keen on certain suppliers, and when we've presented the scoring, they've just waved the white flag. Tried fighting initially, saw the scores, gave up. Because they were part of the scoring regime themselves. My claims rate, just so you know, has halved in the last nine months. My savings rate has more than doubled. Now, that's not all I asked her. We've done a hell of a lot of hard work. Um, but the tool has certainly helped us get to the point where we are. Uh, and certainly uh, for us, we, we will continue to push heavily, not on developing tools, but on supplier development and increasing uh, uh, our suppliers' capa uh, capacity to work with us. But it's still early days. I'm not sure it will be a pizza in a few years' time. It might be a fondue. It will still have cheese in it, I'm sure, one way or the other. Uh, I really do expect that the sub-scoring will change over the next 12 months to 24 months. We will change some of the questions. We will change some of the focus. The overall scoring methodology, I'm sure, will remain constant. Uh, otherwise, I have to make a major revision within, within whatever tool I was to use. Uh, but we will certainly change subscores. Uh, the other thing that we kicked off last week is we've started asking some of our suppliers what it is like to work for us. And I've got an awful lot of very worried project managers because maybe we'll discover why there's so many claims. Maybe engineering will have to admit that they never quite finished that design. In fact, they're still designing it after we've built it. And maybe that's why we have so many claims. Because for me, uh, bringing a conclusion of the engineering process earlier uh, could save the company an awful lot of money. Uh, we, will all, we are also using this tool to uh, uh, basically track uh, our category management process. Uh, so I see across the various categories that we have going through our formal process exactly where they are in it and I can drill to uh, the documents as well. So the tool does a lot more for us than just score suppliers. But I would expect it to. It costs enough. Any questions? Project for, a build project for us is 18 months to three years. Uh, it depends on the client, uh, what they want to do. Uh, but let's just say it's a build project. Uh, we have a two-year warranty on average, uh, which includes all the running costs uh, uh, of that equipment because it's not as simple as just build it. 
the, there are certainly consumables that go into it. So, so we have a methodology for calculating the consumable costs, which the supplier basically submits uh, his pricing for. Um, we certainly cost in, uh, uh, it's a, for us it's a total delivery package normally, so the supplier builds it, delivers it, installs it, commissions it, and warrants it himself, but obviously we have all the spares that are required for the normal running. Um, we sometimes break out the transport element because we buy a hell of a lot of transport a year in reality. Uh, I think the lead site has over uh, 250 uh, 40 footers turning up next week, so these are big. Um, but it de really depends on uh, uh, the piece of equipment, how detailed the TCO is. But it's getting more and more and more detailed, especially from clients who really want to understand the long-term running cost of their site. In Japan, it's even more complex because we frequently operate the plant for them. Because unlike in Europe, where it's normally an electricity board that's asking us to build for them uh, uh, a power plant in uh, Japan, it's a municipality who wants to get rid of waste because we actually only build power stations that run on waste. We burn waste. We recycle what we can out of it before we burn it. And once we burn it, we reclaim all the metals. Uh, we charge at the gate for the tonnage of waste coming in. We obviously sell off the metals and we sell the electricity to the national grid in Japan in that case. But, uh, but the TCO is pretty complex, especially in Japan. It, it runs to m many pages on Excel. And I'm still it? trying to learn enough Japanese to understand some of it. Do you use a tool to facilitate that, or do you do that? At the moment, no. Uh, in the future, yes, I probably would. Probably, uh, I mean, I asked it has an expressive uh, bidding tool within, within its range, uh, but there are also others out there. Two things. Uh, number one, I don't like writing business cases. Uh, I've written far too many in my life, and management tend not to read half of them anyway. Uh, so when I realized I needed some tools, I rang up, I asked, uh, and I basically said, can I pay for an e-auction? And I made my senior management watch a real, e a real e auction run. We saved a packet on it. And so they gave me half my savings. And then we actually ran a bidding process to have a look at a number of tools. I, I was aware of a number. Obviously, IASTA was one. In Schindler, we didn't use IASTA. We used other tools. I'm not going to mention them, but they're some of the big ones. Um, but we basically had to look for tools that fit, would fit our organization. I had pretty much a vision for how I wanted my supplier sco scoring system to work. I mean, ERFQs, e-auctions, in, in my view, most of the tools are much of a muchness. Uh, most of them do what you need them to do. Some do it better than others, for sure, and we certainly tried a few others. Uh, but for me, it was a fit between functionality and what my budget was. Well, we favored them. Because basically, uh, you can't get a supplier performance score if you don't already work for me. If you're a bad supplier, we don't favor them. Your score goes down. But as long as you uh, are a reasonable supplier or better, your score tends to go up. So in actual fact, our long-term supplier capability scoring scheme, you can get 0 to 66 points as a new supplier or 0 to 100 points as an existing supplier. So in fact, we favor good existing suppliers. Well, thanks very much, everyone. For the Thank you.